Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. And welcome to our business education SIG out of the Ask a Light Business Education webinar, uh, sorry, webinar series today. Uh, my name is Amanda White. I'm one of the SIG committee members. Um, and we also have Danielle Logan Fleming, Sandra Barker and Lynn Gribble from our um, executive team here as well to talk about generative AI and education. Um, we have a great guest speaker today, but I'll start, of course, by acknowledging that today I'm zooming in from Darug country, um, and I'd like to acknowledge elders past and present, um, and they've been handing down uh, knowledge and sharing knowledge um, and get, keeping knowledge safe and passing that on for thousands of years and have cared for our land, waterways, and sky. So, of course, I'd like to welcome any First Nations people that we have here today. And today we're talking about generative AI. I'm sure if you haven't heard of it, then a quick Google will tell you it's sometimes going to save us or create um, doom and gloom. But we've seen lots and lots of different pieces, uh, whether that's research about how generative AI can boost productivity without replacing workers, um, case studies about how AI is being used in different uh, places in accounting and their workflows, in finance, in management, in human resources. But one of the challenges that we certainly have as academics is how do we teach students and prepare students for a world of generative AI? And one of the challenges I especially had when I was talking with a lot of my colleagues from within the public accounting space is that firms were happy to talk to me, but when I said, can I get you to come and talk to my students to share? And they were a bit, oh, this is our competitive advantage. We're not quite keen to publicly give you access to a tool or give you lots of specifics um, about how it's working. And so sometimes it can be a little bit tough to try and figure out how do we integrate this into our classrooms. And we have lots of uh, great people here who have been using and innovating within the generative AI space in education. But I'd like to introduce everybody uh, to our guest today, uh, which is Patrick. Uh, Patrick is from the universe. Uh, he's a professional teaching fellow at the University of Auckland, specializing in digital marketing. And he focuses on using technology to enhance student learning and teamwork. He's got extensive industry digital marketing experience. And Patrick has helped companies leverage technology to achieve their marketing goals. Um, and so he's going to share with us how he uses generative AI within assessments to help students prepare for a future in digital marketing. So I'm going to pass it over to Patrick, and then we'll have plenty of time as well today for Q&A and discussion afterwards. So Patrick, take it away. Cheers, Amanda. Thank you. Let me um, share my screen here. I think that should be sharing, yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I'm delighted to be here, and 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 quite honestly, Amanda, I'm I'm a bit surprised. Well, maybe not surprised that people aren't willing to share. I'm I'm a big sharer. I think that we're we all get uh, a little bit better uh, when when we do share. So uh, I'm happy to um, send you through the link to these slides. I have um, my colleagues and I have created a. Notion page that um, has some really good resources, which um, you'll see in the presentation. There's a QR code and uh, there'll be a link uh, as well. So um, yeah, with that in mind, um, let me get started. So again, you'll see here that it's it's Patrick Dodd, Dr. Shopper Richter, and Ina Piven. Those are my colleagues at the University of Auckland. We all teach digital marketing, we all are on the same page with um, with AI and, and and how we integrate it and we we, we share back and forth uh, and share courses. So I'm teaching one semester of undergraduate digital marketing and my colleague Enish uh, teaches the second semester and then Shopper and I um, swap out on a postgrad digital marketing. So anyway, this, this presentation is usually given by three people. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and take the lead and, and just do it on my own. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to, to, to jump in and ask. I'd be more than happy to, to pause and, and answer. So I, I guess um, 
one, it's it's um, I'm old enough to to remember um, very clearly the the computer revolution. Then we had, uh, I guess, the internet revolution. Then the mobile revolution. Then social revolution. And um, people often ask, you know, if, if if AI is is kind of similar to that, and 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 it is in some respects. Other than the big difference is that that time is is different um, in terms of our ability to adapt. Those those previous technologies that I that I mentioned, I think, um, were all rolled out in such a way that that it it it, it wasn't massively disrupt, disruptive to to to, to education, society, business, etc. There was there was disruption for sure, but it wasn't it wasn't significant, um, uh, at least you know on on the on the sharp uptake. I think this time is a little bit different in that um, AI is here, and the the rate of change and development and 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 adaption and adoption is 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 mind boggling fast, and that's the struggle that that we have I think as educators is how do we. <clears throat> How do we meaningful meaningfully uh, integrate this into into our curriculum, whether that's you know in teaching and learning assignments, etc. So this is what we've done in our digital marketing course. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you teach digital marketing, but I, I'm hoping that um, some of the insights that that we that that you'll see today can possibly be applied to your own own courses. So with that in mind, we'll go ahead and and get right to it. So here's a quick agenda. It's the why, the how, what's next, and some resources. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and start with um, the why. And um, first slide here is um, just uh, uh, just an example or some samples of, of business schools that are, that are absolutely embracing AI and going all in. And those are top universities, um, Harvard, Wharton, et cetera. And they've really positioned themselves as uh, with AI, generative AI, as a competitive advantage. Now, I'm not sure that um, you know a, a, the universities that come along now that say we also, you know, uh, would like to adopt or or have adopted or integrated AI can 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 stake a position of competitive advantage. But I think that if you if you if you don't if we don't start acting on this um, and 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 integrating AI into our coursework, that it could be a disadvantage. Um, finding that we're we're a little bit behind the the ball on that. So, <clears throat> from my perspective, from from digital marketing, I always found that it was um, one of those things coming from industry um, was trying to ensure that students were work ready, that they had the, the skills and the technical knowledge um, to be able to make a, a meaningful impact when they, when they actually got into, into the workplace. And if you look now, um, and I'm, I'm assuming this is, this is not unique to marketing, but in, if you were to do a search on one of your um, job search engines, um, you would find that many, if not all, um, yeah, um, postings or opportunities require some kind of um, ability to use generative AI. And um, so that's where I was looking and thinking, you know, AI is, is, is already, in fact, digital marketing is probably the place where it's had the most impact. So it was, I thought it was, you know, incumbent on me to, to ensure that that, that was a skill set that, that my students had. So looking from a from a, a lit review point of view, there are plenty of articles out there, and there and, and this is you know an area of research that is that is absolutely growing, that really kind of provide a framework um, of what we should be doing, you know, whether that's um, you know how to how to roll it out in an ethical way about taking a balanced approach, um, taking um, you know that hands-on application and engagement. Um, how are we how are we using it in the classroom for meaningful tutorial sessions, etc. And then um, obviously looking at the at the kind of the the downside or the darker side of this, which is um, that erosion of students' authenticity. So so how do we how do we overcome that? Uh, and, and potentially, um, how do we ensure that that we can actually measure whether whether learning has occurred or not? 
um, in terms of academic integrity. So there, the groundwork is there. There are plenty of, of research um, articles out there that, that, that um, shed some, some, some really good insight there. So with, um, with our course, so again, it's, it's that we had a variety of digital marketing courses, but there's a basic digital marketing course in undergrad and postgrad. And um, what we've done is um, really, I guess, dove in head first and um, started out with, with course design. And um, we have an AI assistant that is that we use uh, in each module in our canvas for each that, that introduces each weekly topic. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about our plans for a, an advanced AI assistant that that is is we're working on currently. That'll take uh, that'll provide a little bit more depth to that. But so we've got AI in the course design in terms of um, uh, introducing the topics, etc. Um, we have AI in, assess in, in assessments, and I'm going to speak to this uh, at more depth in, in a few slides, but um, we actually, um, this was the first semester that we required students use um, AI uh, in one of their assessments. And then um, uh, that third column where you see individual oral assessments, we, we also realized um, that we absolutely needed to make sure that um, that students were actually that we were actually measuring whether or not students were learning or not, and we went um, back to I guess it was kind of back to the future or old school, and so we've um, introduced individual oral assessments. Um, those individual oral assessments um, um, definitely um, offer a high a high degree of of assurance of learning. Um, and we do that at the end of the semester. And um, I'm happy to talk to you um, more about the individual oral assessments if you have any questions there. But it's it's one of those um, assessments that that um, definitely is kind of that backstop to make sure that um, students are not getting a, a free ride on on generative AI. So how we did it, um, I think the first and foremost thing that's important is that you don't have the the shiny object kind of syndrome where where you just start grabbing at anything that's AI and, and is quite interesting and cool, that it has to be for a purpose. It has to solve a problem and it has to be, I think it um, really must support those 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 learning outcomes that you have in your particular courses, as well as the the, the graduate profile. Um, so um, it's also, I guess, one of the one of the things that we've that we've well that we realized is that we've we've had um, AI in our classroom for for quite a while, well before um, ChatGPT, in the specific um, tools that we're using. Um, so in digital marketing, there are industry-based tools like HubSpot or SEMrush, which is uh, HubSpot is a marketing automation tool. They also have some diagnostic things in there around search engine optimization, and then SEMrush is also um, was a, a tool that is is around search, you know that is used for search engine optimization. And both of those tools have started using um, generative uh, generative AI or have some kind of machine learning algorithms that are that are help driving the the process there. So we've had it in there for quite a while, but the tools that we're again that we're that we're using really are um, industry focused and um, definitely support the, 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 the learning outcomes. And I'll get to that in, in the next slide, specifically the learning outcomes that they address. Um, the, the other important thing is um, I think the continuous dialogue with the ethical, ethical issues of AI. Um, so we start um, each semester um, in, in week two, um, diving into um, AI and getting things started. That is um, talking about ethical issues around AI. And we've got a, a framework that I'll, I'll, I'll talk to in just a second. Um, and also some, some um, 
some exercises uh, in prompt engineering. So that's the first big two hour tutorial is just on AI. Uh, and that kind of kicks things off. Um, and part of that is really understanding, I guess the, the algorithm algorithm data sources and the limitations that, 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 that AI still has. I think that there, there's probably going to be a, a point in the not so distant future when we're not discussing hallucinations and things like that, um, where AI will, Gen, Gen AI will actually um, be a, a, a fairly reliable source of, of, of information. But right now it's, it's still a bit touch and go. So um, teaching students how to, to fact check and verify is also um, really, really important. Um, the thing that we do in, in our digital marketing course is that we work with um, each semester or, or quarter, depending, um, work with a live client. So it's a, it's a business that, um, that comes in, presents a, a business case with us, um, a, a marketing, um, a, kind of a, 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 a marketing project, a digital marketing project, and um, our students then um, work the rest of that semester uh, solving the, those particular um, problems that the business has. So we integrate AI into this because there are, their AI can be used um, to help solve those problems. So it's, 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 it's again, it's, it's very applied industry focused projects, et cetera. And then lastly, um, I think that it's really, really important. And this is um, the, we, we, we held um, a, an AI in education um, workshop last year, and we had people from industry coming in and talking about how AI was was being used in their respective industries or um, companies. And one of the things that that came out of this, which was which was quite interesting, was the one skill that's still in demand that AI can't um, can't and will not ever replicate are those soft skills, the people skills, the the ability to work well in teams and and play nice with others. And that's still really, really important. So working on those soft skills um, shouldn't go by the wayside just because we're, we're advancing through using, using AI in, in the class. So the learning outcomes. So we, we have um, two learning outcomes that um, I, I think really blend nicely with um, the integration of AI. And that's, the first one is to develop and present a data-driven digital marketing campaign. And so that's again, using, um, using a live client uh, that provides a nice brief. And we come in and do a couple of things. We do a digital audit, and then based on that digital audit, uh, then roll out a, uh, a digital marketing campaign proposal. So those are, the, those are the two things that we do. And we use a variety of tools um, with that in order to, um, uh, to accomplish those things. Um, as I mentioned, we use SEMrush and um, HubSpot, but we also use, um, there is AI PRM, which is a, a um, uh, it's a Google extension that is absolutely phenomenal um, that um, blends uh, in with, um, uh, with ChatGPT and um, does a lot of really interesting things with prompts. Um, especially around the, the uh, digital marketing sphere. We also use, um, have access to things like HeyGen and uh, Adobe Firefly, uh, some AI Google Ads copy generator, et cetera. So a lot of the tutorials that we do, we're trying to, um, again, solve a problem and we're using AI or, or specific AI tools to, uh, to help us with that. So, um, I think probably the, the big thing here is the, the ethical consideration. And we, um, we developed what um, we, we like to call the sacred framework. Um, it is um, the, so the sacred framework for, for AI. And it stands for specificity, accuracy, clarity, relevance, appropriate, appropriateness, and depth. And so each, again, each tutorial um, there is probably, I, th I think it's probably true that each tutorial has some, some, some use of AI. Um, 
we always go back to um, whether whether it's in the prompting or how it's being used, that sacred framework so that students um, students I think that's that's pounded into them from from the get go, uh, and then throughout the semester to make sure that um, they understand again um, the rights the, the 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 responsibility that they have um, the 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 level of uh, of detail and and clarity required in 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 a, in a prompt itself and then whether or not it's it's the output is is going to be appropriate and and then how to check that so that's that sacred framework that we use um we've got um as as i mentioned um that ai and course design i'll show you just a uh, that uh, a video of our um, of our little digital assistant that 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 we use a, at the beginning of each week. Let me. I may. Uh, I'm not sure if this will come through because I'm not sure that I shared with sound. Give me one second, and I'll I'll share with. Hi, Digital Explorers. I'm Trisha, your Digital Teaching Assistant. Big congrats on kicking off this new semester. I'm super excited to be part of this journey with you. We're gonna learn heaps, crack a few laughs, and, who knows, maybe even redefine digital marketing. You'll see me in every module, bringing you a concise introduction to the course's weekly topics. Can't wait to meet you all in our first module. See you all soon. So that was um, that was our digital, uh, and again, a lot has changed. That was um, that was rolled out um, a year ago, um, and it's 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 changing. I, I didn't I didn't um, include mine that I used for this semester, but that was that was what Ina did um, a year ago. Um, so that was that was created with um, with uh, a tool called HeyGen and um, a bit of Midjourney for some for some graphics. We also, in terms of the of the the course design, um, we've 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 built AI into into the actual assessments. So um, in Ina's um, digital branding course, they actually used um, a tool. Um, which you probably all know about, called Notion, um, which is a AI-powered um, website that that um, is really fantastic for um, compiling uh, a portfolio, a digital portfolio. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, students, that was part of their assessment was to to create a digital portfolio um, based on on the things that they were doing for the the client company, which was Samsung New Zealand. Um, we've also, in terms of that, that assessment, um, students were, were required to, um, build a, uh, a digital influencer and that digital influencer, um, this was, again, this was a year ago. Um, it probably would be a little bit different, a little bit better than what, what you'll see now, but this is what one of the students, uh, put together. Hey guys, it's your girl Selena Jade here checking in poolside from Hawaii. The sun's about to go down and you guys, I've been shooting the most stunning content while we've been here on the Samsung Galaxy Flip 5. The flip design has been so handy for traveling costs I can just pop it in my cute little ganny bag while we're on the go. I'm using the Flip 5 right now for this TikTok and you guys, it's such a game changer. Like, I don't even need hands, I can just prop it up on this deck chair to shoot all this content in such high quality. It's so perfect for TikTok vids. Anyway, I can see all your questions in my DMs about the pics and videos, so I'll put a link to the Flip 5 in the next story. I'll also be adding all my outfit details for the trip to the Flip side Pinterest with Samsung, so make sure you check that out too. Love you. <laughs> so, so that was, um... 
the 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 class was um was working with samsung new zealand and and their remit was um to to build out a marketing campaign that would um be targeting um gen z and again that was a year ago and it's quite interesting that that today um digital influencers are actually a thing they're a big thing in digital marketing and um, they're quite a bit more sophisticated than what you just saw there, but that's just because it's a year of of development um, that that's gone on. So, um, so there was there was that, and then um, this semester um, in our digital audit, and so that's that's really just doing um, a complete digital audit of their of their. Their, their website, social media, um, et cetera. And um, that audit is the foundation for, once they, they, they've done the audit, they do a, a, a SWOT analysis based on the audit. They go through and do a gap analysis based on the company's goals and, um, and the SWOT, and then come up with some recommendations from that. Now, um, it is a big assignment and it is it is absolutely applied and it is it is impossible to do using ai alone you just simply can't do it you can't although i had a student try um you can't put in a, a url into chat gpt and say give me a digital audit on this and here's the template it just doesn't it, it's just not sophisticated enough yet maybe that's going to happen in the future but it it, it hasn't happened yet so what I wanted to do was um, to um, to require it. So this is in in this in this digital audit assignment. Um, uh, it was uh, a, a course requirement that they use, or an assessment requirement that they use uh, ChatGPT. The way that I had that set up was um, I uh, wanted to make sure again that we were all inclusive that no one was being left out because I, I required somebody, to, you know, I required them to use a premium version. We didn't, it was, it was 3.5. This was before 4.0 came out. And um, I told them again in the, in the assignment instructions that all of the work that they, that they, that they do uh, that they use AI for has to be in ChatGPT in one conversation. So, you know, in ChatGPT, you've got your, all of your conversations that you start well, all of the work that was done in one for, for this assignment had to be done in one in one conversation. And uh, at the end, <clears throat> you can share that conversation URL. So I had them share that URL, put the URL in the in the in the um, in the assignment. And um, yep, yeah, I told them that I was going to to um, yeah, actually assess them. So I required them to use it. I said, well, if I'm going to require them to use it, I'm going to assess them on it. And so you can see here on the marking, um, this is how, um, yeah, I, I, I had it. Uh, so this was part of the rubric criterion, which was depth of engagement. So looking for prompts that show a command of the topic, creativity and depth, the evolution of the prompts. So that's um, uh, kind of taking that iterative approach. So they put in a prompt and then um, get the get the get, get the the output from that prompt and then go in and dig deeper and deeper and deeper until they were quite confident that they had what they were looking for um, making sure that um, all factual statements were accompanied by an in-text citation and a reference i thought that was really important um, and that also helped them to make sure that the information that they were getting from GPT was actually verified, um, so that was that was important. Um, obviously, then the insightful inter AI interactions, um, kind of that was very subjective, I guess. But um, yeah, really looking at at their ability of how they're using it, and I'll I'll get to how that how that output looked like um, in just a second. So um, so that was that was the marking criterion. Um, we talked, I've talked a little bit about the, the interactive world. I'll, I'll, I'll just mention it again. Um, at the end of, at the end of our course, um, the, the students submit a recorded, um, 
video presentation of this uh, campaign proposal. And um, <clears throat> we then, uh, the, once the, uh, on, the, on the, the, the following week, um, we bring the student teams in for an interactive oral. Um, we actually ask each student uh, a series of questions. Each student gets about five to seven minutes. We structure the questions. Um, so the questions are absolutely um, based on the proposal that the student teams have submitted. Um, students um, are told well in advance that they need to know every single aspect of their presentation. Quite often, as I'm sure you, you've, no, you've, you've noted before, that um, you get students that make a presentation and you say, all right, Amanda, can you tell me about the budget? And Amanda goes, ah, oh, well, the budget wasn't mine, that was Sandra's. And you go, okay, Sandra. And then all of a sudden, Amanda's off the, off the hook. With the interactive oral, there is no off the hook. Everybody is on the hook. So I can ask any question. And the way that we structure these, it's similar to an IELTS kind of format that we, we, we establish a C-level question at the very beginning to kind of get them into it. It's a fairly easily, uh, easily answerable question. And then we'll dig a little deeper and deeper. So it goes from C to B to A to A plus. And, and at some point, students will go, don't know. And wherever they exit out of, that's kind of where they where they where they land. So this is um, uh, again a fantastic way of of making sure uh, one that you that the students have that 360 degree view of the project that they were working on. That if they've used AI, they still understand the fundamentals of why they are proposing what they're proposing, etc. And um, again, assurance of learning has taken place. It was, um, we've been doing this now for a, ye a, a year and a half. And um, we had 41 groups over three days. Um, we did a bit of uh, just a, an informal uh, survey afterwards. And 68% 68 68 of the students actually really appreciated. And they said, this was our, our big opportunity to let you know to show, to demonstrate what we know in your class. And it was really fantastic. So while the, the IOA is, is not really AI related, if you are going to be using AI or integrating it into your class, you still need to have a, a secured assessment. And the IOA, is, a, I, is I'm a big fan. Griffith University has a whole bunch of information on the interactive oral that, that they have that's, a, that's readily available. So what's next? So I, I talked about how I started out this semester um, with prompt engineering and talking about the ethical implications, again, that fact checking. And then each particular tutorial, again, within digital marketing, whether we were building out a buyer persona, um, looking at the buyer journey, crafting um, Facebook ads, or whatever, they, whatever we were doing or, 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 or doing analytics using AI, um, we, we were doing that um, in each session. So there was some absolute skill development there. It's the same, again, the, the same skills that, that are, are, are being used in, in, in industry today in digital marketing. Um, we talked about um, uh, how we're assessing um, the AI utilization. And um, so when we, when we presented this, this uh, the first time, we actually hadn't had that um, digital audit come back yet. It was the students were in process. And so at, at the University of Auckland, at a teaching and learning forum, we presented this. And the first question was, how are you going to, you know, aren't you afraid that that your students are all going to come back with A's on this assignment? They're using AI for, you know, why, why wouldn't they get A's? And um, my answer was, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen, but this was actually the first time in my teaching career that I put out an assignment and had some aspect of the assignment um, where, I, where I really wasn't sure what it would look like, right? And that, 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 that aspect, in my case, was looking at their, their actual prompts and going through. I, I, had, I really, again, I, I, I was kind of sure that they wouldn't all be A's. But anyway, that that was that was the big uncertainty there. So the 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 results came back, and you can see 
actually that that um, it was a pretty standard distribution of grades. Um, we had about 15 percent ish uh, around that top end of A to A minus, and then uh, around 15 percent down at the bottom end from the C minus to the to the to that D minus, and then a fat middle. And um, I also I, I guess I, I let the students know that also the standards that this time around that the that the the, the quality of work in the standard was the bar was was was, was a bit higher. So that was what my 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 TAs also took 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 with them when they were marking, is that it had to be impeccable in order to get an A, an A plus. It absolutely had to be impeccable. That all factual statements were 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 accompanied by a, a good in text citation and a credible reference, um, the first and foremost, and then and then just the quality of work um, for each criterion had to be had to be impeccable, and they were. So this this one A plus. Uh, I had one A plus, and then uh, a bit of uh, quite a, quite a bit more A A and A minus. They were they were some of the best work that I I'd ever had. I mean, it was really fantastic. That said, down at the bottom uh, were students that probably hadn't attended many tutorials. They got wind that the, <laughs> that they could use AI, and I had some really horrible horrible prompts as in here's the template here's the url fill it out and call it good and that's what happened and you know they were they were failing so um it we had um you know both ends of the spectrum there um the 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 interesting thing was that i so i had there was 190 students in the class and i thought um it would be relatively easy trivial in fact for me to build a custom gpt that would be able to evaluate the students prompts and um i really again i i had a, a, a small data set that i was using to test my custom gpt and it was sweet as it was everything was was looking really good and then the students turned in their work and I started going in and and so I had three TAs that were marking the rest of the assignment. I was just marking the the um the the prompting around this. And what I found was that my my custom GPT was was just not working well at all. Uh, it was it was not it was not parsing the 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 prompts the way that it was supposed to do it and and evaluating each the, of, of those those, those parsed prompts. I spent about three days, burned through three days of trying to sort this custom GPT out and it just never got there. And I finally had to pull finger and um, do it manually. So I would go into the, to the, at the, the URL and I would just do a control find because I had the anonymous was the, the word that started every prompt. And I would just go through and look at all the prompts. I, for research purposes, um, copied and pasted all of the, the prompt and output for each student into a PD, into a separate PDF files and saved those. The, the, the largest volume for, for a student was approaching 200 pages of, of prompt and output. It was, it was huge. So that's why it was my custom GPT was not working very well. It was, it was quite interesting. Now the prompts that were being used uh, once I started going through this, I realized, you know what, as much as I've tried and I, as, 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 as much as I thought I had done a, a fantastic job at teaching students how to prompt, uh, I didn't really do that good. It, 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 it was a fail. Well, not a complete fail, but I, I, I saw that what happened was that m the majority of the prompts were like for admin tasks, which is you know, here's here's my here's my set of notes. Build it out into a paragraph, or here's a here's a paragraph, or here's a two paragraphs. Reduce the word count by twenty percent. Those things are those things are are good. They're 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 great for for increasing productivity, but they're not. You know, they, they're not. They don't require a lot of skill, right? So they're fair enough. You can do that, but you know, the, 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 there's no competitive advantage in being able to, to do those kinds of tasks. The next most um, common prompt was the, the how to explain why. So how do you do this? 
where do I look for this on on this particular tool? Those kinds of things, which I thought, all right, you know, that's for you know for that that continuous learning. This is something that they they can you know if they if they know that they can go to AI and and fact check it afterwards. But to 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 learn you know what does this mean or how do I do this? That's important. But again, not super skillful. I mean, most people can do that. Um, the 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 next one, which I thought was probably the most valuable was that kind of that strategic analysis where you would go, right, uh, here's my, uh, here are the company goals and objectives. Here's my SWOT. What are the gaps? That kind of thing. Or here are the gaps. What are the recommendations? And to be able to, and there was very little of that, of that higher level strategy being used with AI, which was, was disappointing. Um, and then even more disappointing was the lack of, of that iteration where you get a prompt and then you start digging and continue to dig until you until you you're quite confident that you've that you've got a good output or you have an understanding of, of, of the topic. So that iterative approach um, wasn't being used much at all and only only for those students that were at the top end of things. The, the the B and C and D students had very minimal uh, iterative prompting. So where to next? I guess um, we need more feedback from students. Um, we need to, um, again, uh, one of the things that we're doing at the end, now that this semester has come to a close is, is put together a more uh, in-depth survey about the, the use of AI in the class and what they found and uh, interesting and and those kinds of things and how it's helped them and in other courses, etc. Um, we are also uh, in the process of building a digital marketing tutor assistant, so an AI assistant um, using um, a company that was that came out of the University of Auckland called Soul Machines, and it's a it's it's a uh, an avatar that has an API back to um, uh, ChatGPT, and so we're hoping that we can do some some pretty interesting things where um, students will have the access to this avatar and to be able to ask it questions about each weekly topic. So if the topic is search engine optimization, they could ask things that are general, you know, you know, how is search engine optimization? Where does that fit into the strategy framework? Or um, what's the difference between technical and on-page SEO and, and that, that kind of thing, but also to be able to use it to practice their interactive oral um, potentially where they could say, hey, I'm ready for, I'm ready for some, some question and answer on, on SEO. And the, the, the digital assistant will be able to ask them questions provide feedback on their answers, et cetera. And then at some point, hopefully, to be able to say, yeah, you've, you've reached, we, we, we're, we're confident that you've reached a level of understanding for this topic that is, is, is good to go. So that's what we're working on for this semester coming up for SEM2. Um, we also have, and I'll leave this here so you can, if you'd like to take a screenshot of this, um, this is our, our Notion page where we've got um, documented all of our, um, yeah, the things that we've done in the class, how we've used AI. Um, we've got the assessment, the marking rubric, all of those things that, that you might find useful. So that's, uh, that's what we've done in our digital marketing class. And um, I think that's, that's the end of the, what I've, what I've got. So um Maybe. I am I'm happy to um, to answer any any questions that you might have. Fantastic. I'm sure people will we've had some questions in the chat. I had one and I, I will start off. So with a lot of these tools, um, hey Jen, et cetera, was was there anything where students had to purchase a license or did the university purchase licenses or was it all um, tools that are free? So a mix of both um so we didn't so the the tools that we that were required that they use were free and so we we're on an education program with hubspot and an education program with semrush um the tools like hey gen there's 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 freemium versions of these where they could just do a quick you know 30 30 second 
video that they could create with an avatar. If they wanted to do AI for their for their final presentations, um, you know, I said, listen, guys, you're five in a team. For what it costs you for a, for a, a Starbucks flat white, each of you chip in and get a month and and you know go for it. Um, but again, it was not required. So so the, some students have have paid versions of some things, others not. But it didn't influence again how they were how they were marked. Fantastic. Awesome. And of course, uh, for anybody who's interested in interactive orals, we have one of the queens of interactive orals here with us, the wonderful Danielle Logan Fleming, who is at Griffith. She has put some uh, uh, little uh, links in the chat there. Um, and for those who might not know, uh, the team at Griffith have won an Australian Financial Review Education Innovation Award uh, for their work. And I think that for a lot of people who are thinking, how do we verify um, achievement of learning objectives? Uh, this, especially with generative AI and sometimes online proctoring might not be as great as it is sold to be, um, then this can be a really interesting way. Um, in terms of that interactive oral, what proportion of the final grade was it? 20%. 20%. And if you but, couldn't do but, that, part, like if you came to the interactive role and you just, I don't, I can't explain anything. I can't do anything. Does that have sort of downstream effects on, so zero for that, but then zero for the other parts of the assessment? No. So that's a separate assessment. Okay. It's, 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 it's a, it's a standalone assessment and yeah. And, and that happened. I mean, you, you can't, sorry, you can't bullshit an oral. You, no. you simply can't. And, um, you know, when a student comes in and, and you ask them a question and they, you know, just said, no, that's, that's not what I asked. That's not what I asked. They said, don't know. And so that's, that's, that's what you end up with. But, and, and Danielle, I have to say, yeah, yeah. Huge kudos to Griffith because they, 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 that's where I got all of my information. And, and they, that, that website is just a, a, an abundance of just great things around orals, how to do it. Uh, the the rubric criteria and everything is perfect there, but it's 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 one of those things that that you can absolutely within within five to ten minutes know exactly where they land on an on an A B C D scale exactly, it's it's fantastic. Now Lynn had her. I, I wanted to um, actually echo that because I teach a large amount of international students. Mm. And I've introduced it this year. So with Danny's amazing support and all the fabulous resources from Griffith. And um, I absolutely had the best thing about this was that they knew that they couldn't do it. Yeah. And so there was no moment of trying to debate if the mark was different, right? And so there was this very clear moment and we also said you couldn't bring your computer in or use your phone because people were sort of saying, you know, and I was like, no, no, you can bring your notes in, like, because that's what you take into a meeting, but you wouldn't be Googling in a meeting. And a lot of them wanted to give a presentation. I was like, no, no, this is a conversation. And so we allotted 15 minutes on Danny's advice, used 10 and then did the marking in that 15 minutes. And there was not a student who didn't have that aha moment in front of me I had a student who was brilliant all term and I was able to give them, they ended up with a 90 something mark, which is nearly unheard of in management, sort of, you know, social sciences, because they did such an amazing uh, job and was so prepared and really knew it. And I had someone else who just at the end of it, I said, look, I think you and I both know you've not really been able to join the conversation at all. Um, so like you, we have it as a separate item. We have it as 30%. So it's a project 30, 30, and 30. And the 30 is about the previous 60. Um, so we ended up with one fail in 75. But I think that the really important thing was it became really clear where people had just regurgitated the AI or done something that, you know, when you're reading it, you go, well, it's a credit. You know, it's not terrible. It's a credit. Um, the analysis is a bit light. When they get in front of you, you just go, there's nowhere to go. I, You know, I just wished I could have it in everything, right? But um, 
next year, Danny, when I'm not teaching 1,300 students a, a term with 20-something uh, tutors, I can see it coming in more and more and more in the things that I'm doing. So I just wanted to echo just if you're nervous, take a dive in. You won't look back. 100%. Fantastic. And I think what, oh, I will go to Danielle next really quickly say um, thanks so much Patrick and, and Lynn there are lots of different ways to uh, basically what Patrick was saying about using how he's used uh, artificial intelligence in his assessment and the interactive oral there within the course there are opportunities now also for us to think about what that looks like across a program as well and the use of interactive orals across a program as program assessment there depending on on the discipline um, the one thing I will flag is that much like in written communication there are essays that are different to reports that are different to um, you know uh, executive summaries that students might write there's also a variety of oral assessments that are interactive or are done uh, synchronously but an interactive oral um, generally speaking as Lynn mentioned there we really look at that conversation now I know Patrick's mentioned questions and he used those as his prompts to prompt a conversation but what uh, we try to avoid and why the students usually find it so positive is that we're really looking at that conversation and how they can have a conversation with you around that particular aspect so um, thank you very much to you both for for giving some uh, lovely feedback there and, and Patrick I um, concur I'm seeing a lot of use of interactive orals either within courses or across programs to help our students use artificial intelligence uh, appropriately learn to use it but then also to assure they're learning where we need to 100 percent. and and i just want to go back and 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 say again when students understand that there's a an oral at the end with gpt 4.0 which is free there is that ability to converse back and forth that they that they can so you've seen the demo that open ai has done where they're i guess it's a it's a mock interview that's the same thing that we're doing in our interactive oral so our, we're teaching our students um when when gpt 4.0 came out it kind of go back and forth that is going to be more pronounced going forward because the technology is getting better but that's a great way for students to to, to really get that practice in for their for their orals Yep, and that, that works really well when we've got that one-to-one uh, -one sort of situation as well. Um, there's lots of designs where we want to extend and synthesize also. So over time, uh, developing those um, the, the AI support to be able to give students opportunity to formatively practice this is a great thing to aim for, for our, particularly for our online students. Any other questions? I'm just finding the link to the, I remember watching the YouTube video about the interview prep. Yeah. So as we round out, oh, Jess. Sorry, um, I just have one question for Patrick. Um, you showed in your results in the types of prompting that the students um, did um, that a very small proportion had that high level of prompting that you ideally yeah. wanted them to do more. Um, when you advise them how to use uh, the, the chat GPT, did you give specific examples of the types of prompts that they could do or they were just given free reign and it just depended on no. how far they got? Yeah. So, so as I mentioned, so pretty much every tutorial, we, we have some, some use of AI uh, some, and a lot of chat GPT. Before, so that we give them the, the the task, and then talk about how we would use ChatGPT to to dig into this task or to solve the task. Before they do anything, um, what we do is share prompts. So on like on Padlet, put in your prompt, and we look at at the prompt itself to go in and 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 assess. Does it have the right context? Does it have the right depth? Is it asking the right question? Is it getting to the right problem? And so we we do that, and then and then and then we, rather than everybody taking that one prompt, we put in, you know, a, a variety of prompts and look and see what the output is. And so you can see what you know, what 
the output, the, the good quality output, again, is dependent on, on a good quality input or a prompt. And so we can see then, and we look at the different outputs that each prompt is generated and so that they can see where they, where they may have gone wrong, or maybe we didn't get right at all. And what do we need to ask next in order to, in order to, cause what we got was not quite what we wanted. Um, and then, so we, we need to iterate. So that's, that's how we were doing it. But again, Jess, uh, as you can see from my, that, that's that, 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 that screen, <laughs> I didn't, I, I wasn't, I, what I thought, whatever I thought it was doing when it, when it, well, I thought it was doing a good job, it turns out they needed a lot more re <laughs> reinforcement because it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't doing, doing it enough in their, in their assignments. So, yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. Now, Patrick, one last question for you. In terms of staying up to date with what's happening in generative AI, what would you recommend for people to look at for resources? I personally love the Hard Fork podcast. I don't know if anybody else listens to Hard Fork um, from the New York Times, which is their generative AI podcast. But what else would do you recommend to people to yeah. keep up to date and try and get a feeling of what's going on? So, so especially... Um... AI in, in education. So Ethan Mollick, his, his news, newsletter and Substack is, is, is really good. Um, I also um, subscribe to a, a, another one called the Neuron, Neur the Neuron, which is um, a generative uh, AI kind of daily newsletter of what's, what's happening there. Uh, and then there's another AI newsletter that I get, uh, which is TLDR. Yeah. But Fantastic. we will find all those links and make sure we put them on the web page as well with our yeah. yeah that that Ethan Mollock is he's he's brilliant really he's so like good that. <laughs> I get the TLDR one but I also get um the AI update just let me see what it's called and I get they all come at the same time which I love because it means it's just mm. five minutes worth of uh the rundown AI and it is a really nice little, I can glance it. It gives me the sort of top six things I should know for the week. I don't have to engage with it. I can just move forward. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes I just, you know, I again, it's so incumbent to, to stay on top of things. And, I, and, and as mentioned at the very beginning where, you know, the time is, it just feels like we're just, things are happening so fast that it's impossible to keep up in it. In it and it's really tough. But these resources with the neuron and, and Ethan Mollick and, uh, you know, it, it takes 15 minutes a day just to, you know, stay in, in, in touch with what's happening. Awesome. Oh, I think one of my links didn't work. I put, I put the correct one in there. Thank you very much. Can we give Patrick a big virtual or physical round of applause of course this recording will go up on the uh Ascolite, uh business education seek website um i should hopefully be able to send it to all of you as well i'll also post it on our linkedin and it'll go out in the Ascolite newsletter if you are an Ascolite member and you're welcome to share that far and wide so big thank you to everybody i can't remember when our next um, webinar is supposed to be. Uh, we're not that organized, but if you would like to find out more about Ascolite and you're not already a member, um, I've put the link in the chat. It's the Australasian Society for Computers in Learning in Tertiary Education. And there's always lots of good stuff coming out from Ascolite as well. Um, their conference is coming up at the end of this year at the University of Melbourne in uh, December. And uh, submissions are open until the 7th of July uh, for the conference. So there are Petra Kutcher's, um, short, concise papers, longer papers. And I think we also have posters this year. Is that right, Sandy? Yep. So posters, workshops, symposia, panels, um, all of the information is at 2024conference.ascolite.org. Um, that website is being updated. I can tell you that the next scheduled webinar for this group is the 9th of August at the same time. Fantastic. All right. Well, I think I just, sorry, just one oh, last yeah. thing. I've just put my email into the chat. It looks very random because I didn't explain why. But if you'd like to be part of the business, so please email me and I can add you to our mailing list. So that'll be fantastic. Thank you, guys.
Awesome. Thank you, everybody. See you next time.